to consciously create the life that we want. There are three aspects that I'd like to discuss today that are helpful to keep into consideration. Number one is a vision. Knowing how you would like it to be. I recommend watching my video from the start of the year. I'll link the description to it. Number two, which happens on the journey to realizing the vision, which is actually quite enjoyable if we allow it to be that way, which is releasing identification to unrelated beliefs to our vision. And thus, having a vision is helpful when it comes to discernment. Number three, intuition, which is listening to yourself and trusting yourself on the journey to realizing your vision. Going beyond the outer world for answers as it is only a mirror. And if it seems to provide answers, it is actually reflecting the answers first found within. So as we've been discussing, this is operating from our vision in a pure of heart sense, which as mentioned in number three, Part of it may include not allowing beliefs from the past, which we have perhaps once identified with, to create unnecessary suffering on the journey to realizing your vision. We can release identification to them. And who determines what to release? Well, that's where intuition comes in, as many beliefs can be helpful. So you get to choose which ones to release. Now we identify with beliefs in degrees. Some we may wear them as applicable, depending on the objective, and put them aside. And others we may be identified with to a higher degree of conviction. And that's fine if it's in harmony with our vision and how we'd like it to be. If not even those ones we hold to that degree can be released. Remember, your essence is formless awareness. You are that. And you give form to this world by what you personally believe to be true. Now, intuition may not make logical sense at perhaps first glance. It may seem radical in its ways, outside of convention and may even stimulate fear with a blend of excitement, as we have experienced this many times. The cave we fear to enter can hold the treasure that we seek. And I found that intuition has been helpful as a result of entering into the cave that was fearful and exciting at the same time. Intuition was guiding me to enter into that cave and upon reflection, it was to release identification to certain deeply held beliefs that I was not consciously aware of at the time that were creating unnecessary suffering in my life and seeming to hold me back. They only seemed that way as nothing can hold you back. This intuition is a deep inner knowing beyond conjecture. For example, once. I was not able to listen to myself and trust myself to this degree. And as a result of releasing certain dogmatic beliefs guided by intuition, I can suggest anything once to myself and accept that suggestion. No arguments. And my subconscious mind takes care of the rest to reveal it in physical form. So acknowledge, nothing can hold you back. You are formless. We can only create the illusion via belief that something holds us back. And how do I know this wisdom of intuition? Well, I have countless examples. I'll share a few in a moment. And I love it. That blend of fear and excitement that I mentioned earlier. And it could be quite helpful. To point number two, fear is seen as our friend. It reveals the beliefs in mind. And if they seem to hold us back in relation to our vision, we can release them. Enter into, or you can say in partnership with and into, your subconscious mind and change them. You have all the power. Now the subconscious 
reveals these beliefs through intuition because perhaps the conscious mind does not understand them, not aware of them, or to the degree that the subconscious knows. And so intuition, in its mysterious ways, may reveal a bold move to make. One into a cave that we may fear to enter. Yet it holds, because intuition knows, the treasure that we seek. And it could be a radical change in life. Move to another country. Enter a new career path. Or even a single step which, on the surface, may not make sense. Like starting a conversation with someone. A direction outside of our normal routine. And this bold move has the opportunity to steer up some of these beliefs subconsciously identified with in mind. And then they're brought to the surface, which could be reflected outer world circumstances or inwardly revealed by our thoughts, emotions, or observed in our behaviors in a way which we could call reactivity. And this is where we have the opportunity to ascend. So, does intuition guide us to reveal these beliefs for a higher purpose? Or is it to reveal the beliefs so that we could release them and achieve our vision? Well, I believe it's both at the same time. And thus, the journey to realizing a vision could be paved with opportunities to release identification to these beliefs that may have once been helpful, but now not so much. Another way of saying this is to operate from your vision and allow. Surrender into the unseen hand to do everything for you, as we discussed in Tuesday's video. Accepting that it knows ways that we may currently not know. And a lot of times, we find that these beliefs that are being released can be categorized as controlling beliefs or lack of faith or lack of trust belief. So accept your vision as reality and allow all of this to happen naturally and fun to the blissful flow-based way. So we often say in many different ways, acceptance of the end wills the means. Practically spoken, imagine yourself already having realized the vision. And accept that the ways of realizing the vision show up automatically, and they do. This has been my experience, and I trust upon reflection, you have observed this many times in your life as well. If we look back at our lives, we see that so much of what we have accomplished happened in ways we didn't know how. We took one step, perhaps in the unknown, and the unseen hand placed the reflection of our faith as the material path. Faith materialized into a path that carried us to the destination and the vision realized. Like a marionette, faith moved us. The unseen hand pulls the strings. The unseen hand shifts people, environment, and steps behind the scenes and brings them in mutual harmony to your vision and aligns perfectly with the laws of creation and the laws of nature. The opportunity shows up or the person shows up. And we know right then and there that this person plays a role or this opportunity is the one to take. Intuition. And we all have it. The question is, do we trust it? And to what degree? I've learned to trust my intuition exclusively. For what is found in the outer world is first found within. The world reflects it. So when it comes to further believing, Anything that appears in the outer world, check within with intuition to see if it aligns, for we are taught to walk by faith and not by sight, and the senses could seem to deceive, which they actually don't. They only seem to appear that way, and if something does not align, let it be. There's no need to identify with it any further. So I trust my intuition, which is oriented for my vision more than what seems to appear outside, which can be past beliefs playing out and we don't need to identify with them if we don't find them helpful. And so we'll actually discuss this further in this Sunday's video I've got coming out. 
So with intuition, I may make a sudden, unpredictable move in this world. Change my direction on the drop of a dime. Book a flight the same day and I'm gone. It's been this way since, only increasingly so, since when I started my entrepreneurial journey in 2009. Listening to the Steve Jobs commencement speech over and over again, where he said, Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you want to become. One time a few years ago, I booked an Airbnb to stay up north. I was snowboarding. And when I left, I was driving out of town. I had no place booked. I had, for whatever the reason may be, no place booked yet to stay. And then on the drive back, intuition said, go to Vegas. So I pulled over. The flight was in a handful of hours, no overthinking, booked it. Then I dropped off my stuff in storage. And I made it to the airport just in time. I actually ended up booking my place to stay for the week when I landed in the airport at the destination. And the place that I stayed, the area, ended up being perfect. The unseen hand moves everything and everyone. As a matter of fact, I met some friends who were connected with that hotel while I was there. And we still keep in touch. They know many in the business community in Vegas. And we also, kindred spirits, see reality the same way. And so who knows what that could lead to somewhere down the road. When it does, intuition will show up. Another similar example, when I built my IT business, which I had from 2009 to 2013, I reached out to someone on Facebook. He ran an entrepreneur meetup. We met up for coffee. And then sometime later, he called me. I wasn't expecting the call at that time. And then he refers me to a business with so much work, I had to hire my first contractor. And then we did work for the accountant in that business. And she ended up referring so much business that I had to tell her to slow down as I was building the operational infrastructure to support it. And that's the power of your intuition, which is, again, listening to yourself and trusting yourself, going beyond dogma or opinion. So all the power is within you. Both what you want and how to get there is within you. And you need not worry about those details if you don't know how, because so much of it is taken care of for you. So I don't seem to listen to this outer world. If it resonates, then fine. If not, zero attention, zero judgment, and even this is happening automatically. I'm not trying. We need not try and control. Spirit moves us along. I simply release all control, because why do I need to control? No physical, emotional, or mental force. Overthinking control. There's only one step. Ask. Which is, assume your vision is done. That's it. Then yield completely. Flow. The flow even is done for you in your favor. So first, formulate the clear mental image of seeing yourself realizing the vision and done. And you could inwardly say it to yourself, like I do many times, that's the way it is. Or think feelingly or feel it real. All of it works. Because it implies the same thing. And on the journey, if controlling beliefs show up, revealed by reactivity, observe them without reacting, and you'll know what to do or not do. Intuition. I have a rule, and this helps. The world lets me be, and I let it be. No force, no control. As a result, the unseen hand, without interference, continues to rearrange it and the path to realizing my vision is cleared. All done for you by the power of your subconscious mind. And those past beliefs fall aside along with the reflected circumstances as garments cast aside, as James Allen once said. Very soon so altered has mind become that the workshop can no longer hold them. It has become so out of harmony with their mentality that it falls out of their life as a garment is cast aside. And with the growth of opportunities, which fit the scope of your expanding powers, they pass out of it forever. It happens automatically. The beliefs of the past fall away. And if a bold move is required from intuition, I take it. It further sheds the identification to the past beliefs no longer true. And again, they may have once been helpful. And all we do here is let them pass. We release them, and then the ways continue revealing themselves in relation to your vision in a flow-based way. And so you don't have to fully know 
how you're going to get there. We know where we are going. We are on the journey to realizing our vision. The way and how takes care of itself. If there's anything to do, it is done for you and through you by the unseen hand. So release into the flow of the journey to realizing your vision as you operate from your vision, allowing things to change, people, environment, circumstance, etc. to change. I hold on to nothing as all those details are rearranged for us by the unseen hand. And if we seem to try and forcefully control, it's a lot of times just past beliefs in mind showing up ready to be released and we simply don't identify with them. If it shows up in our thoughts, we let them pass. If it shows up in our emotions, we let them be. They are releasing and so we let them release. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You can say, all is done for me on the journey to realizing my vision and knowing this, I know what to do and not do via my intuition. I allow myself to release the story of the past no longer in harmony with how I am ideally inside in a fun, joyous, effortless way as I remain automatically committed to my vision, listening exclusively to my inner voice and intuition whispering gently to me the path to walk on, paved for me by the unseen hand. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.